Hello and welcome to another interview for the Top Experts League. Today we're joined by Chris Bork and he is pretty much the one and only Chris. I'm sure you all know who he is. And I'm joined again by Nelson, who, or aka Masmora. And we're going to be asking Chris some questions similar to the other interviews that we've done. Hey, Zach. Thank you for being here with me again. And we thank Chris for having accepted our invitation. A very huge honor for us indeed. Chris is well known from from everyone. He's 26, he's from Canada, and judging by your perfect English, I suppose you are from the English-speaking part, Chris, am I right? Yes, I'm from Western Canada. Uh -huh. Which town exactly? I'm in Edmonton. Edmonton, that's like in the south too, right? Just It's, it's the second province on the west end, west, like the west side of Canada. It's in Alberta. Uh -huh. And it's yeah. really close to to America, to North America, right? I mean, to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're we're probably a good, I don't know, twelve hour drive from the border. Okay, I suppose that's not much for you. Twelve twelve hours sounds like a lot to me, but <laughs> yeah. to Americans it's probably not much. Uh, you yeah. could drive <laughs> up and down England in twelve hours. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. yeah, it might actually be less than that. I'm not too sure. I haven't looked at a map in a while, so. But anything below one day, it's nothing for you, probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, Chris, we had some uh, small difficulties when we, we were trying to schedule this because, of course, the huge hour difference. Um, I'm in Europe, you're in Canada, and because you told me you have a lot of stuff to do at work right now, uh, would you care to tell us a little about what you um, what you actually do for uh, what, what's what's your work actually? Yeah, sure. I'm right now. I'm working as a process engineer. At a at an engineering consulting firm called Stantec, and there I work on various oil projects. Doing well, I'm I'm a junior process engineer. I've only been an engineer for a couple of years now, so I'm mostly doing work for more senior process engineers. Okay, is that a full time work? Uh, it sounds like a full time work. It's a little bit more than that right now. Oh, even wow. more. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm definitely putting in some extra hours, so. Uh -huh. I see. Have you been doing that for uh, not for long? I would suppose. I've been I've been working here for almost a year now. Okay. Uh -huh. So yeah, it's I'm liking it though. It place is awesome to work at. So <laughs> I'll stick around for a while. Yeah, of course. Um, Are you, have you got work in your hometown, or or you're originally from somewhere else? Actually, this is this is my hometown, and okay. Yeah, I'm. I love it here. <laughs> oh, nice. Um, so, uh, if you work a lot, you obviously don't have much time for hobbies, I suppose. But is there something you do when you're not playing AOC or uh, um, and you're not working, not playing AOC? Is there something you like to do? I mean, you do sports or anything like that? Yeah, I, li I like to hang out with my friends every now and then. And also, yeah, we, we have a soccer team that we play on. Yeah, I was going to ask you that because you have on your profile picture of Skype uh, <laughs> a soccer ball. So, I <laughs> to ask you that. Yeah. But it's just a it's a recreational league, so it's not too competitive. We okay. just play once a week, get together, have some fun. So Zach, this is uh, surely no coincidence. Viper plays soccer, or uh, Riot plays soccer, and Chris plays soccer. So this is... oh, it is the most popular sport in the world. So are you going <laughs> to yeah. tell us that you play chess as well? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have to ask, being Canadian, do you follow ice hockey? No, I don't. Wow. I don't. Okay. I'm one of the few people here. Yeah, it people give me a hard time about that too. But uh -huh. <laughs> I, I heard they're like a really uh, strong team in ice hockey in Canada. Uh, is that right? Yeah, we do really well here, definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and tons of people play it, and tons, like even more people watch it and follow it and make bets on it and hockey pools and stuff like that. Uh -huh. yeah. And if you like soccer, uh, do you also follow it? I mean, in America, there's not a lot of uh, a lot of soccer, right? It's... Actually, I I don't. To be honest, I, I'll, I'll every now and then I'll watch a game or two, but it's not. I don't follow it too closely. Okay, but you know who is uh, Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo? You know those guys. Yeah, for okay. sure. <laughs> because many <laughs> Americans don't. That's uh, that really surprises me. Because here in Europe, they're so well known. I mean, mm. really everyone knows them. And uh, yeah. I've heard many Americans don't know them. I found that really surprising. Okay, and. Um, how often do you still play AOC, actually? Uh, I mean, if there wasn't any tourney right now, you are currently particip participating on the Medieval Wars. 
if yeah. this tourney wasn't going on, how often do you actually play AOC still? Well, that's the thing. I, I guess whenever I get the time and I just feel like kicking back and relaxing, I mean, for AOC, I love playing with a couple friends and just, you know, playing yeah. decent games with random sis, random maps and all that stuff. Like, I really love that, you know, we've had all these fan patches. It, it really improved the game a lot. The like, I remember... Yeah, user yeah. patch is just great. Even, like, even, yeah, just, I remember three years ago, we played team games, and some would drop, and then you'd be done. You'd have to start a new game, because it's at 10 minutes or whatever. Yeah. Now you can restore you, it. it yeah, now you're just story. like, this is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Really what do you cool. think about the upcoming spectator mode? Do you think that's going to be a, a, have a big effect on the community? Oh, I wish we had that, like, 12 years ago. It's going to be great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, I mean, like, that's, in my opinion, that is one of the key things that, like, StarCraft had that Age of Empires didn't have, which is why StarCraft took off a lot more. Because, mm -hmm. like, you look at all the big games out there right now, they all have spectator mode. Like, you know, League of Legends, I've talked to guys who are making 100 grand a year getting sponsored playing that game. Mm -hmm. And, like, it's because so many people watch it. It's like, you know, just in Canada, everyone watches hockey. But, I mean, like, around the world especially in Korea and stuff like that. Like, everyone watches, like, this League of Legends stuff. <laughs> and it's so and easy to watch, isn't it? So it's just it is, so yeah. easy to get and, a big audience. Yeah, and you sit on the edge of your seat. I've never really watched it myself, but, you know, for Age of Empires, for example, if you could watch, you know, top players play on four-on-four, I mean, it's some popcorn every now and then. <laughs> yeah. yeah who, who wouldn't do that? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I would surely do that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Yeah. <laughs> Even if I wasn't. Playing, yeah. yeah, so you are, are you confident about AUC's future? I mean, with all this uh, amazing stuff coming up, do you think I'm, we can still grow even more? I think so. I mean, it's really amazing how balanced and fun this game is and how much strategy there is and how we've evolved over the years. And I don't, I don't think there's too many games like that. And I think everyone who's still here is probably going to be here in a couple of years, but for the most part. And even if you don't play anymore, you'll still probably, you know, every now and every couple months, you'll check the forums or check the top players recorded games. Or... Yeah, that's a really interesting thing. Uh, I so, watch lots of streams, and many of the people who are chatting on the streams, they say, I actually don't play anymore. But they are yeah. always <laughs> watching the games that are on the yeah. stream. That's it is right, easy yeah. to watch. And I think with spectator mode, it's just going to get easier, which is great. Yeah. Yeah, like even me, like I, every now and then, I'll pull up Warcraft 3 and just shoot up you know, one of the top players games and just watch them just for the hell of it. Yeah. And they, you know, they're, they're much more of a micro based game, but it's still fun to watch. I used to play it, but yeah, I was going <laughs> to say you played Warcraft three quite a lot, didn't you? For a, for a year or two, I did. I tried to get into world cyber games, but I didn't make it. Ah, that's a shame. Yeah. That was all, that was, yeah, 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Long time ago, yeah. yeah. So currently you're number one on the Vubly top 10 random map one V one ladder. Are you confident in your position there? Do you think you're going to stay there, or or do you think you're going to drop down, perhaps? Well, we'll 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 see how that happens. But uh, it's you you know I, last time like earlier this year I you know when the ladder first came out you know I Viper had the number one spot and then I took it from him and then i decayed from 2230 or something like that down to like 2070 just didn't play for call it 2 months and then came back and slowly er, eked my way back up there but it seems like lots of the other people on the top 5 or so are kind of like taking a break and playing each other privately so they don't show any of their stuff yeah so kind of stuff that happens waiting. around tournament time yeah we're kind of yeah exactly so you just mentioned uh, this dk system how do you feel about that do you think it's a, a good thing actually oh i love it it's so much better like in the old days man like oh i was the first one to complain about that in a major way like publicly like privately first you know call it years and years ago and then publicly and then i got lots of backlash for that <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, I think when so. the discussion came around, there was quite a lot of support for it, to be fair. So it's good that it's sort of caught on, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. So you have been around really for a long time. When did you start playing AOC, actually, Chris? Yeah, that's. I started with the Age of Empires 2 demo version. In, <laughs> wow. In probably September 1999. 
<laughs> so, I remember using Celts on that one map where they have, it's a kind of like Fortress, and the enemy computer would just send one unit at a time at you, and I just sit there converting it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. And I mean, you have played lots of, in lots of players, you have been, well, pretty uh, soon you were on the top spots of AOC, right? Well, it took, it uh, before, like, I never, I didn't make it to the top very quickly, but I made it to the top, like, I went, yeah, it was more of a, like, a slow progress. It was in 2001 when we found out there was going to be a Microsoft $50,000 tournament, mm -hmm. and at the time, I was probably, like, 2,100 rated, 2,200 rated, somewhere in that range, and, you know, the number one rating was around 2,500 then, mm -hmm. and so I wasn't near the top, and I was like, shit, I want to, I want to play it for this, so I trained my ass off. <laughs> And, you know, the, the best guy in Canada at that time was a guy named Crexus. And before that tournament, I ended up getting better than him and actually schooled him pretty good. But then Microsoft only allowed people who were 18 years or older to join the tournament. Oh, you knew they were younger. Yeah, they excluded, like, call it four or five players out of the top ten. Damn. But I still oh, think Grunt would have yeah. wanted it. He, he played pretty good. <laughs> yeah. But and, all the, there was all prizes from 1 to 16th place and a free trip to Seattle. So. Oh, cool. Yeah. That would have been awesome. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you have seen lots and lots of huge players. Um, do you think it's really hard to get better right now? I mean, it's not what I want to ask. If you think uh, AOC is played at a higher level right now, I mean, you think players today would easily beat... Uh, uh, I don't know, a 2K5 player from those days? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you think the gameplay actually involved? The it did. Involved? Yeah. Quite a bit, too. It's And lots of, things, lots of things that have changed is that everyone knows the strategies now, and you also know things that commonly work. And back then, it would be like, A, you have no recorded games, and B, mm -hmm. you're kind of playing off your... Like, it was a really big advantage if you had, like, a friend or two that were really good as well, because you could play each other and chat about what you've seen someone else do, and... Uh -huh. You know, I think that like a team atmosphere was good back then. Now it's like, hey, you, you know what? You're brand new to this game. You can pull up Rex. You can yeah. find, you know, people talking about strategy and stuff like that. And you could probably get quite a jump start, yeah. especially you, if you already had the RTS skills from other games. Do you think we are going to see ever new strats? I mean, uh, we know already lots of strats and we know which ones work good, which don't. Do you think, are we ever going to see something new, really new? Yes, we will, but it's not going to be like there'll be small changes typically. That's like take take Loom for example, right? I mean, back in the day, you know, actually before even AOC in in the original Age of Empires, if you hit a villager, it wouldn't attack back. So mm -hmm. if you didn't have Loom, especially early in, in the early game when you're fighting wars and all that stuff, yeah, people will start harassing your villagers. Like now, you you know, you can attack a vill from uphill and kill it or whatever. It has no Loom quite often, but back then it would be even more more of a problem. And then they made it so Vils auto fight back. So that kind of half unevolved that strategy. And then now we we've, we've kind of gone back in time where we go, well, let's wait wait with Loom as long as we possibly can, especially if our boards are close and we're not going to get harassed. And then again, if you now people are scouting more aggressively and trying to get there earlier, and you know maybe harassing a villager while it lures a boar or something like that. So it's kind of shot back and forth whether to attack or not, to do that or not. Mm -hmm. Quite a few times over the years, just based on you know simple game mechanics, small balance changes, and just you know what what you think you can get away with and what you think you can do every game, and I think stuff like that is going to continue, especially because we're getting like like you know take light random for example. There's tons of new maps there. I mean, there's new like we're playing team tournaments here, and team strategy has evolved quite a bit too because you need to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, or else you're not going to win. Like. If you're not playing as a team, and in the old days it used to be, hey, get three or four good players together and you just do whatever you wanted. Just kill your guy, whatever. And it wouldn't matter. You didn't need any more than that. Go ahead. Do you think there's a lot more room for a strategy of, uh, evolving in team games rather than in 1v1? Yeah, team games got a far way to go, definitely. And even one-on-one -on -one still has a little bit of way to go. There's, Yeah, there's still some things left that are, are interesting. I wanted to, like, you know, I wrote my first book I, I spent a lot of time writing that but you know I, I could write another one but I don't I don't think I'll ever have the time to do it yeah. but uh, I well, still think there's a lot awesome of things awesome if you could do that <laughs> <laughs> yeah I don't I don't like yeah maybe maybe in 20 years or whatever you know <laughs> 20 years the game's still going strong yeah <laughs> and AOC's still strong yeah <laughs> but 
it takes it takes a bit of time, especially because you gotta you gotta plan what you want to tell people and what you don't want to. What do you, you want to still keep a secret for yourself? I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> both. <laughs> well, I have to ask you this question. You have uh, played against uh, lots of top players. Um, it's probably hard to say, but which was the one which really impressed you more from your opponents? Uh, definitely doubt. Mm. I mean, he's like I said, he's played for many years and he's got. He's got some good styles. Like back in the day, I used to we used to have very different styles, and we'd still have really close series. And back then, there wasn't a whole lot of competition, so I mean, he didn't really evolve for quite a few years, and neither did I. I didn't know like lots of the late game macro stuff. I didn't know some of the economy balancing stuff that he does, and lots of the army micro stuff, which are, he he's really good at big fights typically. And I was completely the opposite. I was really good at the early age economy, and I'd be good at choosing a strategy and stuff like that. But I think I think he's developed quite a bit on that front, especially if he practices a lot. Although I don't know if he's doing that, but but uh, and I think on the other side, I think you know I've learned quite a bit from him over the years too. So mm -hmm. I think he's, I think I'd definitely say he's my he's in my opinion the other another like great player. Yeah, yeah. learn a lot from. Obviously, you and Doubt have been around for a long while now. What's your opinion on sort of newer players such as the Viper and Jordan 23 and how quickly they've grown up to the top levels? Yeah, they've, they've actually done quite well in a short period of time. But they've also, you know, had a great base to learn from. Like, I mean, they, you know, they've seen tournament finals, you know, it's and, and they also played a ton of games <laughs> yeah. like, I remember looking at uh, the zone ladder and and I know they both smurfed and, and you know they both had call it three or four thousand games played in, a, in like two years like that's like ten games a day or something like that or yeah, more so that's I mean look at doubt for example I mean he, he he might play a few other games and like you know it's just I don't I don't think he has that kind of time <laughs> mm. so yeah. I think that's helped him a bit but they also got some some neat extra styles like they've got both of them have really good choices about when to change their economy up and they both have really good like small unit micromanagement mm -hmm. that's one thing i like about both of them i'd say yeah that's pretty common trait among yeah you think that's a characteristic from uh, these these newer players you think so uh older players let me say it like that don't uh use that kind of strategies i mean small units micro and stuff well, I think I think lots of the older players just didn't like you know take doubt for example, right? Doubt like he never needed to learn any of that because you know he was still winning half the tournaments or whatever without yeah. it. Mm -hmm. And you know, did I just learn the other half? Like not back then, no. But once the competition arrives, then you have to like it's kind of forcing you your hand. It's like, okay, I'll stop being so lazy. <laughs> yeah, I'll definitely do this extra stuff. I'll micro my fish boats to make you know make them spread out into the right fish and all that you know like small things like that but really you know you're like I'd rather just kill this guy like <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> yeah. so I want to ask you what your relationship is like with the other guys in RVK because we know that your team doesn't use voice chat is that right in tournaments yeah we we haven't been but we're actually really close I love these guys yeah it's so much fun to play with them. Even though every now and then they'll like get frustrated and they'll start talking in Portuguese and then I have no yeah. idea what's going on. But I'm just like, okay, I'll try and live. I'll try and live. That they're doing something. I don't know what it is. Yeah. Oh, it's been mad fun. Yeah. yeah. And, I, uh, I don't know if I'm being uh, unjust with someone, but uh, we all know another huge Canadian player, Slam. Um, yeah. Do you have a good relationship with him? Yeah, he's he's my friend. He's uh he's definitely improved a lot. Uh -huh. Like that's right. I'm actually like his execution. I've I've played him a couple games where I've seen almost flawless execution from him, and if he could keep that up, he would definitely be in, in the you know top player realm for sure. Yeah. I yeah. don't know how much he's like. He kind of like took like a break here and there, and and like that time that I played him when he did that, it was it was a while ago. But you know I haven't seen him around for a bit, and then he just kind of came back recently. Well, I, I, I hope I hope he gets good and. I hope he, uh, yeah, have another Nations Cup somewhere down the road. <laughs> we get to kick uh, some ass. Yeah, that would be, be great. Nice. <laughs> Very nice. I mean, I'm obviously no expert at all. I'm quite new at this game. But um, when I see Slam playing, I notice that 
well, he just does stuff which other people don't. Uh, I'm not saying it's good or bad, he just does a lot of different stuff. I mean, I've seen him do um, 12 TCs on an, uh, an Arabia Hans War. Um, <laughs> do you agree with this? Is, is, is Slam so kind of an experimentating player? Yes, it was well, definitely, that's the key to learning, right? You've got to try something like 100 times, I'd say, before you know for sure whether it works or not. And back in the day, like I, I barely experiment anymore because I don't really have the time or the inclination. I'm kind of like, okay, you know what? I think I know what works already. And I think it's part, partially because I'm a little too arrogant about, you know, trying things that I, I already, I'm already pretty sure that I, I know. But, you know, call it 10 years ago, like I used to play with a guy named, well, I don't, it doesn't really matter his name is, but we would always try something new and then try and get it to work. And we'd compete against each other. The other person would do like regular strategies and just try to react. And you try and like, for example, like, you know, back in the day it used to be China skirm wars were like the number one thing yeah. and we would like I, we probably tried like doing a men at arms rush like a hundred times and then <laughs> trying it with adding in towers right away and using like five forward villagers and and just because you could you could put up a tower and if the other person tried to put up a tower you could stop them from doing it but the problem was if they managed to get like enough walls together quick enough to keep you from only walking by their town center to their tower your economy would be so weak that you would still lose mm -hmm. but it was actually a pretty decent strategy and it took quite a while to figure that out well enough to know how consistent it could be where it would work what you had to do for it and and that's necessary like i've even seen slam experimenting like that too and there's there's a few other people who keep experimenting like that and that's good because that'll keep the game evolving yeah. but the problem is now is, is you learn something like that and you spend all this time learning it and then you destroy somebody with it and then everyone gets to see that game, and they get to understand what what its weaknesses are, what its strengths are. They get to see it a few times. Mm. So it's not trying copy. Yeah. Yeah. So are you also against uh, this uh, automatically bubbly upload of the recorded games? No, I, I think it's great, but it's just it hinders that strategic development, I guess, mm -hmm. which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it, it does make it like you know, it's not like you're doing a secret strategy anymore. It's People yeah, know what you're up to. What I mean. so, uh, yeah. on, on the old uh, zone days, uh, it was actually quite rare to see a record uh, record game from uh, experts, wasn't it? It depended. I mean, it, it, the weird part was if you did want to put, your, let's say you're a good player and you, or even not a good player, but you would choose what games to post and what games to record. So you could record a thousand games and post your ten best, where you just destroyed your opponents. Mm -hmm. And you know, people would think that, hey, oh, you're better than this guy, or you're better than that guy, <laughs> yeah. or whatever. And in reality, you. yeah, it's just not not even legit. You don't true. really learn so much from that either, because if it's just a you know an absolute wipe, then there's not really a lot yeah. to learn from it. That's right. And and yeah. if you beat someone better than you, you just ego posted. It was called yeah back in the day. <laughs> Nowadays, you, you can't really do that. It's, your game's posted regardless, which is good. It's much better. Because <laughs> now it's like, okay, well, you know, you're not. You know, for example, like you get someone who posts a thousand games, and then someone else would say, "Oh, that guy's way better than that guy," and then, you know, in reality, the score might be completely opposite by yeah. a landslide, and you just wouldn't know it because the other guy is not posting the games. Yeah, so, of course, it's different. So you mentioned yeah. having Slam as your partner if there was a Nations Cup. If it was a three v three Nations Cup, who else would you have? Oh, we would have Loey probably, like Ra. His name okay, is. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming he'd play with us. Yeah, he probably would. And I'd probably, as always, I'd try and convince Matt to come back. <laughs> he's a you know a seeker, or some people know him as oh, what's the other name? I can't remember. Blade. Um, but yeah, I call him yeah. Matt. But I'd give him a call and be like, hey man, <laughs> 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 we've cool. got a nation's cup. Get your ass on here. I even <laughs> poison like you know he's kind of stopped playing, but he was fun to play with every now and then. Mm -hmm. Too bad he's not around. But yeah, we don't have enough yeah. Canadian players. Like the weird part is, is like, you know, almost every other player in Age of Empires has like other people in their hometown that they play with and they chat with, and they, you know, whatever. In Canada, I've never had that. No. <laughs> in Edmonton, I've known like one fourteen hundred player who played like a few games and then stopped playing, and that was like ten oh, years dear. ago. Other yeah. than that, it's just been me. So because there's I mean, so many had, Brazilians, uh... isn't there, and so many Argentinians oh, yeah. and and Vietnamese and Chinese that all play together, and then there's not really yeah. that many Canadian players really. No, no, and even if there is, we're so spread out, right? Like, yeah. the closest yeah. guy used to be there used to be a guy named Magi who was in Vancouver, which is a you know a thirteen hour drive away, and but we would play tons together and you know hang out or whatever. But yeah, no one anymore. Yeah. It's all good though. I got all the yeah, like I said, I got our RVK team and 
lots of friends now, so we still play. So that's great. Yeah. So the final of the Medieval Wars is uh, shortly coming. Um, how confident are you about that? Ah, I don't know. To be honest, I think I think if we play good, we'll do well. But it's it's up in the air. Like I'm not too sure what's gonna happen. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm kind of excited for it, to be honest. Yeah. I want to kick some ass, but we'll see what happens. I'm kind of hoping it's level right until the last game. That would just be the best I'm kind of hoping we. I'm hoping we school them. <laughs> <laughs> Run them into the ground. Well, we'll see, won't we? Yeah. Okay. Well, um, this has been great talking to you anyway. We're going to have to draw this to a close now. Sure. Is there one final thing Thanks. you want to ask or anything, Nelson, before we go? No, I just really want to thank Chris so much. It was really great to have him here and the fun chat. Um I think I hope you guys enjoyed it. And keep in mind, this was the third part of the interviews. We are still going to interview Jordan. I'm still not quite sure when it's going to happen, but it will happen. And don't forget to check the AOC Zone site for all the latest developments on the Top Experts League. And thank you so much, Zach, for having uh, yeah. accepted this interview too. No problem. Thanks, Chris, for coming. Yeah. And it's been great to talk to you. Yeah, thank you, guys. It was fun. Cool. We'll see you later. See you later. Bye.